Hello, thank you for joining me. I am Kelly and I'm here today to tell you about General Finishes Milk Paint and a whole bunch of other stuff that we're super excited about. So we have been talking about this piece right here and it is a tall uh, five drawer high, high boy chest. Uh, one of our favorite styles because they're just like super versatile. Um, you can use these throughout the home. So we've seen people use them obviously in the bedroom, um, but also it's great for storage like in a hallway or in kind of an odd space. So these tend to work out really well for us and we enjoy working with them. So this piece has kind of a special story and I'm gonna tell you about that in a minute, um, but we have been talking about um, voting on finishes. So we have been, um, I guess, commenting on our page. Um, and what we like to do this because well, I like to see what you guys are into. Um, I think that's kind of fun. And I like to, I don't know, I just think it's fun. And you guys seem to like it too. So the choices for this one were Seagull Gray. So this is a very light um, gray. It's really kind of hard to capture correctly right now. And I really do want to work with it. But I think it's, I don't know. I'm not feeling it on this piece as much. And then Millstone. So this is a really nice... Uh, neutral beige and I thought this would be great um, but I don't know about the hardware with it so that's what's kind of throwing me off there and then thank you so much for sharing that helps us out so much um, we've talked about this before but for any local small business or any business at all uh, sharing their content is like the best thing you can do so thank you so much uh, and then this is brick red so I haven't worked with red actually we have um, we did a couple of small pieces but we haven't done kind of a large statement piece. And also with uh, 4th of July coming up, I thought this would be really fun and interesting to work with. So we've chosen to work with the Brick Red. So this piece, it's kind of a similar tone, so I thought that might be interesting. This is mahogany, um, and it was not in great condition. So right now it looks like it's okay, um, but we have already sanded it down a lot and then coated it with a few coats of shellac to give ourselves a really nice surface to work with. Um, so though it looks okay, it wasn't. Uh, it was not a candidate for refinishing, so um, don't worry about that. Uh, so the red I thought would be nice because mahogany is known to be a bleeder. Um, this happens all the time and sometimes it makes sense to consider the piece you're working with and also the finish so that you get a really nice overall experience. Uh, if I was to try to paint this like pure white or even that seagull gray, I might be fighting some bleed through. So that could set myself up for trouble. Um, so knowing that, and since this is a project that will be for sale, which means that we get to control and uh, do what we want with it, which we always love. Um, we have chosen to work with the brick red. So I think it's a masculine piece, kind of masculine color. It'll work well for 4th of July. And another reason we decided to go with it is, well, based on the story. So this piece we purchased off of Marketplace. So that is the, um, it's like Facebook's Craigslist style selling platform. Um, so we just found somebody that happened to be selling a couple pieces of furniture. So it was this one and another and met her and she was very nice and lovely and turns out um you know we had a great experience a great meeting and she mentioned that she owned a um, tote company so didn't really think a whole lot of it um, but then we actually recently reconnected with her again and she is a small business so a local small business that is growing and doing amazing um, so we reached out to her to see if she wanted to do a little giveaway with us and she does so based on the previous owner of this piece. Um, she is the owner of, um, it's called On the Road Again, and I think these are so cool. So these totes are adorable, um, and they are made out of mesh. I don't know if you can really tell. Yeah, you can see that. Um, so these are the coverings of um, like dump trucks. So you know how they put stuff over it so that it doesn't, the dirt doesn't like fly out. So in the end, they're left with a ton of remnants. So similar to what we do with saving pieces of furniture um, from being part of the landfill or, you know, just rotting away, she saves this mesh and makes these adorable totes out of them. So I think that's such a cool story. And then she also uses um, seatbelt remnants to make the handles. So they're super durable. They are perfect for, oh, there's the, um, you see the logo? There it is. Um, so on the road again, she's really big on Instagram and she would love, or I would love if you guys would go find her on Facebook and I'll be sure to link that 
in the um, show notes after. Uh, I couldn't do it before that it was fighting me. Uh, but she makes these amazing products. So I think they're so cool. And she was a former owner of this piece. So she's been interested to see how it was going to transform. And then we talked about um, collaborating a bit. So we're going to be giving this away. So one of you will win this. Uh, not tonight. So uh, we're going to do this as kind of, um, I guess, a grand finale for this piece. So keep it in mind, this is super cool. I love it. It's called On the Road Again. She is very big on Instagram and um, growing on Facebook. And I think it's such a cool story. So we'll talk about this more. Um, but one of the reasons, this is actually called the Liberty Tote. So works for 4th of July too. Um, but we took the inspiration from the red and these brass. So, oh, hello, she's here. So, Mary tomorrow, that's her. Thank you, this, um, everybody's so excited. You did wonderful. Uh, so, we're gonna be giving that away as part of our experience today. Um, the other thing we're gonna be doing is today, you guys can all enter to win Brick Red. So, I'm going to give away some pink, too. Uh, so, tonight, somebody, well, tonight you'll be able to enter to win this. And then on our next video, which we're going to do on Sunday evening, um, we will be glazing and I will announce the winner of this. So in order to enter to win this pint of Brick Red Journal Finishes Paint, um, just share our video wherever, um, share it to a group or your friends or your page or whatever, um, and then let me know. So you have to comment that you shared because if you just share it, um, there's privacy settings, we don't necessarily see that. So just let me know and that will enter you to win and somebody will win this and that'll be fun because you're going to see that it really is a great product you're going to love it so i think that's it for housekeeping so let's get painting um and if you have any questions please let me know um i try to answer as many as i can while we're doing this and then i follow up later um, and also if you're watching on replay which most of you will be um, we are available to answer anytime, so you can always comment and we'll get notified and we try to stay on top of that. Uh, but even if you're watching this like down the line, um, we can um, view that and we try to help you out as much as possible. So I have, like I said um, earlier, if you're just joining, uh, we voted on a color. Everyone kind of went with this, which is fantastic because this is what I want to do and it works well with our tote giveaway. Um, and this is what we're going to do. So this is Journal Finishes Brick Red. It's, they have a few different breads. So this is kind of a medium tone. Um, the bright red is called Holiday Red. And then there's also a Tuscan Red, um, which seems to be a little deeper. But I thought this would be interesting. So, oh, and I'm going to start with the top. So I don't typically get to paint the top live um, because of the way that we have everything set up. But I'm going to start there tonight. Um, and oh so I already um, poured out my paint so we talk about this a lot but it's worth mentioning don't paint out of your can um, you could interfere with the integrity of the paint and if you're like you know if anything's dirty here and you're brushing and then you pick it up and put it in the paint you could uh, change the look and feel, the way it performs, if you seal it up and then don't use it again later, um, it could be impacted. So avoid that. Um, don't paint out of the paint out of the can for that reason. Um, also, because if you are scraping against the sides and you have the paint open the whole time, um, it's drying, it is altering the paint. Um, so that's another reason. And it's super awkward. So you're going to spill it, um, which is maybe more of a reason. Um, so just pour a little bit into a handy little container. Um, I love to use these. They're super easy and they're just like takeout containers. And then you have a, a bit to work with. So if you do spill it, not a big deal. It's easier to handle. And you can also put the top on very easily. So I have tops and I just pop it on when I am done with whatever I'm doing for the moment. So let's start here. Oh, so you can't see me, but you can see the paint. It won't take long. So you can see how vibrant that color is. And I'm using a Klingon brush. So these are incredible. And the way that they pair with General Finishes Milk Paint, it just gives you a gorgeous, very smooth, very easy to work with experience. Um, 
So with the first coat, I'm just gonna kind of lay it on. And I like to paint pretty quickly. Uh, you could paint slower. Um, I would, if you find that it's drying too fast, you can always spritz it with a little water. I tend to like a, a longer open time. So these general finishes paints, I find to be very easy to work with. I think they're really great for both a DIY person and also the professional furniture painter. Um, you know that we have very high standards and this always, it just always does a beautiful job. You can use it to make textured looks. Um, it's really great to achieve a very smooth finish. And you can see it's like really quick. So now that I have it all on pretty evenly, I like to go back in and just do some long strokes to lay it off. And on a very long dresser, it can be a challenge, but here it's just basically an arm stroke. And that's it. So, also that. Um, you always wanna be watching for drips while you're painting. And so this paint is, what do they call it officially? It is a, it's trying to finish as milk paint. It's not casein based. It is um, water-based acrylic paint. So it's very easy to work with. Um, I think they call it a, they call it all kinds of things, mineral based. Um, and it's really easy to work with. It self levels. It also self seals to a uh, medium durability. Uh, so I wouldn't use it on the top without a sealer, but perhaps you could use it on the base of a dresser without using um, a top coat if you wanted to do that. I always recommend to use top coats um, just because I, I think that's smarter um, and that's gonna set you up for a better experience, whether you're painting for yourself or painting for a client, um, especially the tops of anything. Um, you wanna make sure that they are sealed very well. And what was that other question? Something about Klingon brushes? Um, yeah, so Klingon brushes should be damp. Um, they are used, oops, uh, used and stored damp. Uh, so I always also keep a water sprayer nearby. So if I find that things are getting a little too dry, um, if, if it's not leveling off nicely or moving along quickly, um, I just spritz a little, little bit and it kind of just helps the paint slide off. So because you're using water, it is a, um, they're water-based paints. I mean, um, they are uh, brushes for water-based paints and I love them. So I avoided them. I thought they were like hyped up for quite a long time. And then I actually used one and got one for Christmas. And I, actually it's this one. So, and I've been using it ever since. Um, I love this thing. So this is a F40. And like I said, I got this at Christmas. It's now June, almost July, and it still looks fantastic. So really high quality, really easy to use. Very much recommend them. Um, if you're on the fence, just try it and see what you think. So yes, you store them in water. And I'm going to be doing a video about that. Um, we just, uh, it, our shop sink isn't ready to be on video yet. So I wanted to clean it up a little bit. Um, but what we do is kind of suspend them. We have some hooks. It's actually a towel bar. And then we have a couple of hooks and then they suspend in some water. And that allows the, um, the bristles to kind of suck up some water and then pull out whatever's remaining. So I still recommend, uh, was that too much? Um, that you should clean it well and then do that. Um, some people think that it will just self-clean itself completely. I don't find that to be the case. I still recommend cleaning it and then um, suspending it to get out whatever is remaining. Yes, that's what I do. Um, so this piece we did shellac because it is mahogany. We knew it would bleed. Um, we wanted to be smart about that and pick a finish that would work well with it and also um, prepare it correctly in order to have a successful project. So we have coated it with, uh, I think it was a full coat of shellac everywhere. And then I did another one on the top because the top was um, difficult and I knew it was going to be beneficial to do another coat of shellac and then see what the finish looks like. So you can still see that there's a lot of, oh, maybe you can't see that, um, but there's a lot of scratches and such. So always prep your projects. Um, I know everyone wants to get away without doing that. You can't. Um, 
it will always bite you. Um, you might get away with a few projects and then you will find something that happens and it's very frustrating to have to redo a project because you skipped out on one of the first steps. So that's my spiel. Uh, we're gonna go around the side and then I'm gonna come back to the drawers, I think. So can you see that nicely? Kind of. There we go. Oh, also, so I was moving around that thing really easy. Um, we use these furniture dollies. Oh. Sorry, I thought I had one right there. Um, it's these little furniture dollies um, that you can put on or under your piece of furniture and it makes it super easy to move around. So if you are trying to move furniture on your own in the shop or just to make it easy to access the sides, um, I think they're really cool. And they're in our Amazon shop, which is at amazon.com slash shop slash Captiva home decor. And there we have all kinds of our favorite things. So you'll find a lot of paint, um, a lot of um, supplies, just like shop stuff, like those um, furniture dollies, or drop cloths, five-in-ones, um, some, what else do we have? Oh, um, primers and such. Pretty much whatever, oh, you can't see that. Um, there's, everything's available on Amazon, pretty much. So we have just kind of consolidated it to help you out because it is tough when you see people talking about something and then you try to go find it and you can't find it. So I always find that frustrating. So I try to make it easier for you by combining it all in that Amazon shop. And then we're also putting together a supply list um, which should be ready pretty soon. And that will have all the things just in like a PDF form. So that makes it really easy um, to um, work with and to find what we're talking about. And what's leaning against the cabinet? Oh, the, um, that's the tote that we're giving away. So if anyone's joining now, we are giving away, not today, um, but throughout this project, we're gonna be talking about the fact that those are, I'll show you, I'm at a stopping point. Um, incredible totes made by the former owner of this piece. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, she is a local business and she makes these incredible totes out of um, remnants from the mesh that covers the top of trucks and other like truck things. So like these grommets apparently keep down the mesh of the truck. Um, these are seat belts remnants. So she's saving these items from landfills um, just like we save furniture from landfills and from dying ugly deaths. So I thought that was pretty cool and a nice chance to collaborate with another small business that's trying to grow and support everybody. So really cool. The name of the company is On The Road Again. Um, she's great on Instagram and we're growing on Facebook. So we're going to be talking about that throughout this project because that has actually inspired this project. Um, not only was she the former owner, but... Um, the tote, I'm loving the red and the um, brass grommets. So that's what we're going for inspiration here. So that's a story with that piece. Um, the color is brick red. And, wait, oh, that dolly, is that what you're talking about? Um, I don't know what that is. That's, that's from like Harbor Freight or something. Um, another super handy dolly that we have around. Um, it's not the one that it's on right now. That one doesn't spin as nicely. And because it is um, structured, um, you can use that one for, I guess, more limited uses if you have a, a nice base on the bottom. The one I'm using now, I wish I could find some. We just got more. Um, it's just a little tripod. Dear, if you're watching, come outside and show me where they are. Um, Things so that you can put it on the legs of any piece of furniture so that it's a lot more flexible so that you don't have that that you're trying to prop a piece of furniture on. I'll have one next time if I don't find it before the end of this. So now we're going to move around here and oh here's something. You always need to watch um, the work that you have already done. So, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm starting to get some drips here. 
So whenever you're painting, always kind of keep an eye on what you just did to make sure that it's not dripping or sagging or um, having some other troubles. So now that I've touched that, I need to go back and fix it. And you always want to get to a nice stopping point so that you don't have awkward paint lines in the middle of your project. So that lip is a nice stopping point, and that's why I just finished that off there. Um, no, the dolly's not round. I'm sorry, I can't find them. Hold on, give me one second. Found him. Um, he's using them, so we can't. Um, I'll show you next video the dollies that we use. They're also on the Amazon shop, so if you want to just pop on that at some point, um, you'll be able to find them real easy. So, I do not recommend painting your piece with the drawers in, but for video purposes, it makes a lot more sense. So, I'm going to do that here, and then after the video, I go through and it's better. Um, I will make sure that I didn't miss anything and make sure that everything is the way I intend it. Um, yes, the color is brick red and you always have to prep your piece of furniture. So depending on the finish and the existing piece and the desired finish, um, it, you may have different requirements there. But prepping your piece of furniture is something that will always benefit your project. Um, a lot of people want to avoid that, and I understand it. Uh, prepping is not the fun part. It's the worst part of any project, but it's vital. So you have to um, make sure that it is clean and that you have a nice surface to adhere to. So depending on your existing surface, that might mean different things, but it's always going to be true that you have to have a nice surface to adhere to and it needs to be at least mildly clean. Um, and if you have a very dirty surface, yeah, you need to address that even more. Um, if it's a laminate or super glossy, it's going to require more prep work. Um, if you're trying to achieve like a super um, smooth finish, it's going to require more prep work. So knowing the finish that you're working with and also what you're going after is going to tell you more about how much prep work you need to do. But like with this one, so what I determined um, looking at it, so it's a mahogany piece. Um, it's from probably the 40s or 50s. So that is known to be a bleeder. So what that means is that you'll paint a color and maybe you try to do white and then you notice maybe it's the next day or maybe it's not until down the line, but there's these pinks coming through, especially where um, the original finish was sanded off. That's called bleed through. Um, and that is frustrating uh, because it typically happens either at the end of your project, so you think you're done and then you need to go back and start it over completely, or it might not show up for quite a while. So if it's a client's piece, you might have sent it home and then in a few months, they notice that the finish has failed. So that's difficult. Um, so knowing that, um, we shellacked it. Well, first we sand, well, start at the beginning. Um, first step, you gotta clean it. So we clean it with, um, a mix of denatured alcohol and water and get all the grime and all of the things, um, the oils from using it, just from being in someone else's home. Um, it accumulates stuff and you can't always see that. So you always want to clean it first. And then we sand it to at least give a nice smooth surface to adhere to. Um, it's going to remove any surface scratches, surface scratches um, and just help your overall finish. And it also gives your paint, no matter what paint you're using, something to stick to better. Um, even if you're using chalk paints, which say no prep, it's not going to work. Um, so you can do, yeah, so sand it. And then in this case, since we knew it would bleed, we just went through and did a coat of um, shellac primer over this. So you could use a white primer with a shellac, the shellac white primer. Um, the bin red label is kind of the standard, but it's white. So distressing back, we didn't want to see that. And then, so we, we found another product that's really hard to find. So we're trying to find a good way to 
uh, share that with you all because it's wicked hard to find. But you could just use clear de wax shellac. It's not super fun, but it works. So that's the deal with that. Um, all right, so I'm going to take this out. So it also has this cool like jewelry box. It's kind of fun. So many of these old pieces have kind of hidden um, qualities. So that was a nice surprise. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint these three drawers and then I'm going to go back in and do the rails. So you'll also notice that I tape everything off. Um, that's to create nice clean lines. Um, I know that people appreciate that. Um, I appreciate that. So I think it's worth the time. And it also allows you to move along pretty quickly. Because even though I just painted that real fast, um, I know that there is a nice clean tape line right behind it. So it's going to look um, clean and sharp. Whereas if I had to, if I did not tape and I was just cutting it in, um, it's going to take me a little bit longer. And it's also not going to look as good. So that's another stage of our prep work is taping off to create nice finishes, uh, nice clean lines. And then in the end, what we'll also do is address the drawers. So typically that means um, we've been using hemp oil and that really it refreshes it quite nicely and it's very easy to work with. So doing that. Oh, and for anyone just joining. Uh, we are working with Brick Red, and we're going to be giving some away. So if you share this video, um, wherever, uh, we will enter you to win a pint of oh, this pint. So this is oh, we go. General Finishes Brick Red, and we'll be giving this away during our next video, which is going to be Sunday evening, uh, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, Eastern Standard Time. We're in Massachusetts, so... That's our timeline. And then we'll also be giving away this really cool tote that was donated. Well, we purchased this piece off of a woman and she has an amazing local business making totes out of repurposed items. Um, so we'll be giving that away with this project as well. So it's gonna be really fun. Um, I always want you guys to, um, well, experience this paint because watching it is helpful um, and it's great to see how, oh, you can't see that anyway, so I'm just going to take this out, um, how it works when I do it, but until you actually um, use it, I think you don't really understand how the paints are going to handle um, you learn a lot more when you actually do it. So I want to be able to share these paints with you. And I think offering a giveaway might be a great way to do that. You seem to like it last time. So if you like that idea, um, please give me a like or a heart or something. Um, and that will let me know. Um, and then if you share the video, just comment here that you shared it because I don't necessarily know. Um, if you have strong privacy controls on, which many people do, um, it's not going to tell me if you shared it. So I need you to tell me. And then I can enter you to win. So we gave away a F50 brush. Oh, and that's on the way. I saw that you're watching. Um, so your brush is on the way. And um, we gave away an F50 brush last time, which is one of my favorites. Um, that is just a larger version of this one. So this is a Klingon F40, and I love this. Um, and no, this I'm working with General Finishes. So General Finishes, we are General Finishes retailer. I don't think I mentioned that. Um, and we're working with Brick Red today. So you can see we have lots of stuff in stock. Um, Java gel stain, everyone loves that. Uh, Perlifex, milk paint. We also have a whole bunch of high performance top coat. Um, we do ship nationwide and we ship pretty quick. So Dan is very much on top of um, sending things out. So he usually gets things in the mail 
like the next day. So if you're looking for something quick, um, yeah, we're, we're pretty good about that. Um, and where was I going with that? Oh, so the F50 brush, we have a lot of in stock and we should be getting another shipment very soon. So hopefully there'll be lots of good ones, maybe some shorties, who knows? Um, those are very hard to find, but they are very amazing. And the F50 is just a larger version of this. Oh, there we go. Um, so we gave that away last time and it is on the way. I like these flat brushes um, because I am a traditional painter. Um, that's how I learned. I um, went to a vocational school where we learned what was called painting and decorating. So we learned everything about interior and exterior painting, um, wall covering, design, all the stuff that now we're doing, sign making, um, that now is very popular in the, well, my world, and that we built our business off of. So that's been really cool. And of course, as a traditional painter, um, I learned with a flat paintbrush. So this feels right to me. Um, so I really like these ones. They also come in round and oval and there's a little shorty. So that's like basically an F50, but with a shorter handle. Oh, the angled one too. That one's really cool. Um, I'll have to show you that next time. So you'll be able to see that. Let's see if we can hit that angle. Um, and I'm actually going back to the school tomorrow to do like a trade show thing. So that's going to be kind of interesting. Um, I might go live there. To we'll see how it goes. Because I think that's going to be kind of cool. Um, I've been getting back involved with our high school and that's been very interesting and kind of cool. It's not cool when you're doing it, but you know, later you really start to appreciate things. Let's see if we can get that. Oh, so that's a bag I was just talking about. Incredible, right? It's made out of recycled uh, remnants of um, the truck lining that covers like dump trucks so the sand doesn't blow out. So very cool. Uh, we are located in Berlin, Massachusetts. And that is Central Mass, um, right outside of Worcester. So it's a tiny, very old fashioned little town. Um, but it's bordered by very normal places. So it's kind of great that we get like horses and farms and all these really adorable things. But we also have the mall, which is just on the other side of the town line. So it's like the best of both worlds. And we're actually hosting our first workshop this weekend. So we will be inviting um, people right here to come and learn how to paint. And we're going to be doing some uh, really cool finishes. So I'll be teaching dry brushing. Well, we're going to start with a flat finish and then we're going to do dry brushing and oh, what's the other one? Oh, a rustic distress finish. And then also a, um, oh, a multicolor distress. So I think that's going to be really cool. Um, that starts, well, Saturday is our first class and then we'll have more. Um, if you want to sign up, we're going to keep these signups open until Friday at noon. So get in now. And then um, the next one is going to be, we talked about mid-July, but I think we're actually going to do something different that day that you guys might like more. So the original date is probably going to change on that slightly. Okay. So we... Just painted with General Finishes Milk Paint. Um, you can see how easy that was. Um, we use a Klingon brush. So this paired with the General Finishes Milk Paint, oh, that's a bad angle, um, is super easy to use. It self levels. Um, the coverage is great. Like you can see the top is already almost dry. Um, reds also typically are very difficult to cover. So I don't know if we talked about that. Um, but the pigments in red make it more difficult than say a gray or blue. Um, so you'll notice that sometimes you have to do additional coats with reds or yellows or whites, of course. Um, and then 
yeah, Brick Red journal finishes, we are giving some away. So if you share this video and let us know that you shared it, um, that helps us out so much. Um, any small business grows tremendously by um, sharing and by people telling or talking about us and, you know, uh, word of mouth. That's what's going with that. So that helps us a lot. Um, anytime that you share our stuff, we appreciate it. It helps us. Um, and as a small business, it really does make a difference. So thank you so much. And thank you for your support. Um, please let me know what kind of questions you have. I'll be available tonight to be answering some questions. And then also, um, we're available forever. So if you comment, if you're watching the replay, <coughs> um, we'll be able to interact. And we try to be really responsive about that because uh, we appreciate you guys. So thank you. Uh, oh, the other thing. So this piece was inspired by this tote, which is why it's hanging around in our workshop. Um, we purchased this from the owner of this tote. So pretty cool. I mean, the um, owner of the company that makes these totes. Um, so we have taken inspiration from that and we're gonna be, we decided to go with red and then these kind of brassy handles. So super fun. Somebody will be winning this tote. Um, it's made out of recycled remnants that were saved out of landfills. So really goes along with our whole like green, um, we save furniture, she saves fabric remnants, uh, she's a local business, and it was a very organic um, meeting because we purchased this piece from her and then had a nice conversation. So I think that's all I want to talk about tonight. Thank you, um, have a great night, and I'll talk to you soon. Oh, so we're gonna be finishing this on Sunday evening at 7 o'clock, I'll be doing some glazing with it. So join me then. Talk to you soon.